Thank you. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I know it's Friday afternoon and also the last day of the conference, so I know probably you are a little bit tired and eager to go home. So, but please bear with me for a few, um, like, couple hours for the session. So, <laughs> so okay. Uh, uh, I'm Zhenghua Xu, uh, a doctoral candidate from University of Toronto. I feel so glad to come here to present my doctoral uh, project. So, before we start, I would like to invite you to look at those photos. Actually, uh, those pictures are ads. So, we, we, we saw everywhere in Toronto, uh, every time when I saw them when I was waiting for a subway. I was wondering how, what did it look like? Do they look happy or do they look sad? What's the story behind the feature, their, their expression, like facial expressions? So are, tears, are the tears with joy or tears with sad? So something I was wondering, like emotion without contact is very ambiguous. So emotion, are in, very strong feelings. So that's why how the photos attract my attention. So just want a little bit uh, uh, beginning. Okay. Um, so uh, in my study, I, I was uh, interested in uh, using a personal-centered approach to explore uh, learners' uh, emotionality in learning with uh, within a three D uh, digital uh, uh, game. Um, so according to uh, research, research in uh, uh, cognitive science suggested that uh, uh, temporary dy dynamics of the facial expressions are essential for uh, characterize uh, complex psychological state uh, such as pain or um, mood. So uh, facial expressions uh, reveals direct information about how whether uh, emotion expression is filled and how uh, per interpersonal interaction um, as well as a person's uh, cognitive state. So in the past decades, uh, behavior scientists have spent so much time uh, to develop uh, uh, a proper uh, uh, behavior me measurements to uh, analyze facial expressions. So among which uh, action and the freezers uh, uh, um, facial action uh, system was uh, was is the most comprehensive and useful tool to analyze facial behavior uh, behavior and. Um, so from this picture, you can see uh, the action based on the, uh, the, the rationale behind this uh, uh, system is to uh, uh, basically to decompose uh, facial, uh, um, uh, what do you say, um, decom decompose facial, um, facial expressions into action units. And uh, according to Ackman and Friesen's uh, uh, study, they think the difference in facial uh, behavior is the function of the uh, evoking events rather than the reflection of the difference in facial muscle, muscle movements. So because the like earlier days, so uh, the uh, um, when the students doing the coding, uh, uh, using the facet to do the uh, the code, the code, uh, the coding, code, code the video videos was very uh, labor intensive and time and time is very costly. So probably like spend you spend two hours only code one minute of video recording. So uh, lucky enough, so nowadays with the uh, uh, the use of a computer technology in. Um, to uh, facial recognition, um, um, recognition uh, of, uh, to have made facial facial behavior studies much feasible. So especially with the um, uh, low cost uh, hard uh, hardware such as sensors or uh, uh, a great uh, uh, development in the compu uh, effective computing. So we have seen a great uh, number of. Uh, 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 very advanced uh, uh, facial expression measurements. I should add uh, automated uh, uh, um, tools. So from here, actually, the, in, the, in this slide, you can see the uh, picture. Actually, is a screenshot of uh, I was demonstrating where I was playing the game. Uh, you can see my facial like facial expressions were detected at the same time. So the facial, um, uh, basically the. Uh, basic emotions were uh, generated at the same, like uh, live, lively. Um, OK. 
Okay. So in this study, so we're trying to use um, a personal-centered approach to examine the relationship between emotion approach uh, processes and the learning outcomes by using uh, multi-channel data. Uh, we use uh, students' real-life, uh, real-time facial data uh, surveys and computer log data. So. Uh, so I would like to emphasize computer, uh, so, sorry, uh, person-centered approach refer, refers to placing the individual at the focal uh, point of the analysis because um, it enables us to uh, navigate, investigate how um, a psychological state construct related to uh, their like learners' emotions and the learning uh, uh, their uh, learning outcomes. So in this study, we're trying to answer uh, three questions. Very basic. This is just a preliminary study. So uh, the first one uh, was. Uh, uh, what are the commonly occurring facial e movements and emotions during learning with the digital environments? Uh, here is a video game. And could the frequency of the facial movements predict a student's uh, learning gains? And to what extent did the facial behavior predict learning? And is there a relationship between learner traits and emotions or facial movements? So here, uh, I'm very lucky enough to have uh, professors from North Carolina, uh, North Carolina State University to, uh, uh, to have me, uh, give, give me an nice opportunity to use this platform which is called uh, Christ Island Last Investigation. So uh, Christ Island is an, an dig, uh, intelligent game-based learning environment to help students to learn, develop problem-solving, scientific thinking, and the liter literature skills, and in the game, Game. So uh, this is first-person game, and uh, when the when players play the game, he or she plays a role of medical detective uh, to try to investigate a mysterious disease or outbreak uh, that affect a team of scientists on a, iso uh, on a remote island. So here you can see this the few uh, screenshot of the different stations of the uh, in the game. So first, first one, basically, you can talk to the virtual character. And the second one, you can talk to the patients to, to find evidence, like what symptoms they have. And also, you can, uh, the most important component in the game is the rating part. And also, after rating, so you have to uh, do a short a quiz, quiz. And then after you find uh, certain I, uh, items, so you think they are, you, you speculate they are uh, causes of the disease, so you can do a lab testing. But at the end, of, once you find the right, um, um, uh, find the right uh, 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 transmission uh, source, uh, disease transmission source, so you, you make the final diagnosis, complete final diagnosis sheet, and then make a final uh, treatment for the, uh, the, uh, the patients. So uh, basically, so there are two, uh, three stages in the gameplay. So you have the hypothesis generating and also testing your hypothesis. So then you form conclusion. So in terms of data collection, um, so there are three types of data. So one survey, so we used a background survey and the motivation strategy for learning questionnaires and also using quiz, like pre and post test to look at how uh, they are at the level of their prior knowledge, knowledge and also how much they learn after play the game. And also we ask students to spend uh, 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, to do a little bit of self-reflection writing on their learning and uh, emotional experience. Uh, uh, basically, this is second platform is computer mediated platform. So here for the purpose of this study, so we're not looking at this piece. Um, so the second, uh, the data set is the facial data, and uh, with you, uh, we have the emotion. Uh, um, um, like uh, facial recognition software to track real-time students' facial data, facial behavior, and also we used uh, EEG GSR to look at their uh, from the uh, sort technology to look at their uh, students' um, uh, brain activity as well as their physical uh, reactions. Mm. So given that we have the tons of data, so <laughs> it's very hard to <laughs> to just just to clean the data. And uh, for, in order to answer the research question here in this paper, so where we select uh, uh, 
a member of uh, variables. So for the learner var variables, uh, we have self-efficacy, goal orientation and task uh, value, as well as uh, self-regulatory strategies. So we also did a, a reliability test to test the in, in, um, internal consistency of the construct. And also uh, in terms of the task variables, we use the, uh, the pre-test. Uh, test scores and also uh, the 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 street the four uh, variables on the second column are uh, actually um, are from the computer uh, log data and uh, um, we also have the be official behavior variable uh, which includes seven uh, basic emotions joy anger sad surprise fear contempt and di and disgust and three learning centered emotions uh, frustration confusion neutral state uh, plus the uh, the line uh, 19 uh, official action units that's um, different sets of data so we had a total of uh, 65 students uh, from two groups one is middle school to high school uh, students uh, and the other group was undergrad students so for the middle school uh, to high school students so 60 70 percent, uh, 60, uh, 76 percent are males, and and 60 percent are uh, were um, seventh to eighth grader students. For the undergrads, uh, there's more females, and uh, 40, 44 percent of them are on the fourth year of the of their study. Represent a variety of discipline. For the data, official uh, data, so basically we had 58 uh, video recordings um, with an average of uh, 52,000 fuzzy annotated video frame, which is, that's the data points we had, just only for one participant. And then, so we have seven videos were corrupted, so that's what we included in this study. Uh, before we're trying to uh, do the ana uh, data analysis, we uh, want to s just want to get a general idea, like how their how students' emotion uh, profile looks like across the, the different tasks. So uh, uh, here we just this is just one of the participants, uh, just to get a general idea of what is what is what is there. So for this participant, so we can see uh, he. In, uh, experience lactic emotions more often, pretty much across all uh, entire uh, uh, entire uh, activities. Um, but so one thing you can see actually is very the neutral states is very dynamic. So you can see the uh, uh, the peak and also the depths. Yeah. Uh, so on the left side of uh, the uh, are the um, uh, is the screenshot of the AU profiles, so facial action, uh, facial action units, um, muscle movements profiles. So for here, you can see the three, the three units are the most uh, occurring units, like AU uh, 43, 2, and 25. So for the first, uh, to answer the first research question, so we found uh, four basic emotions so the, uh, the, uh, there are joy, uh, surprise, sad, anger, and three uh, learning center emotions, confusion, frustration, neutral. And we have eight uh, action units or uh, 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 like high, has the high frequency. So, um, so those are the, actually this is the emotions uh, or future uh, action units across entire population, uh, uh, popu uh, uh, po participants. Um, for the second question, we see uh, we want to see if the could the uh, frequency of the facial movements predict a student's learning gain, gains. So here you can see um, uh, AU22 and four are or strong predictor of a number of books completed by the by a student, and also uh, AU2, which is alter a brow rising, was strong predictor of the member of the Cretans in, actually is in-game quiz, and was answered incorrectly, and the member of answers cor correctly, correct before submitting the correct answer to the system, as well as the number of attempts students made in order to make a right uh, um, uh, answer. So also we see both uh, fear and frustration are were the best predictors of the member of Brooks completed. So this, this third question, um, 
so we see if there's a relationship between uh, learner's traits and emotion uh, as well, or uh, facial movements. So from here, you can see disgust was significantly uh, associated with self efficacy Anger was associated with intrinsic uh, goal orientation. Contempt and disgust and sad were correlated with intrinsic goal orientation. Um, sad was negatively correlated with student prior knowledge. So actually, the the new, uh, neutral state was very interesting. So neutral emotion state was correlated with self-regulatory uh, self learning strategies. So based on my observation, uh, when the students play the game, students who have a better, a, a higher level of self-regulating skills need know where to go to get the right evidence and how to find the right uh, evidence, and also how to test properly test the the um, the items. So they they have the, they tend to have a higher level engagement in the game, and they tend to win the game more often. So uh, that's something we we may need to keep in mind later on in, in terms uh, about the uh, neutral state. So for the final, uh, uh, um, we also found contempt was uh, negatively correlated both task value and student prior knowledge. So, um, so, the, uh, so our preliminary uh, uh, results uh, highlighted the strong uh, statistic relationship between uh, specific official movements, emotion, uh, learning traits, and learning outcomes. So. Uh, so there have there are studies suggest uh, AU two and four actually are a uh, fear brow. So they are they were already identified uh, as being associated with uh, frustration, anxiety, and uh, a surprise. So from here we can see from the first question we can see alter a brows rising AU two was a strong predictor with the actually when the students uh, if the students make wrong uh, answers, uh, give the wrong uh, answers more often, so they're pretty much more likely to experience anxiety or frustration. And also when they're, try when they're trying to correct their wrong answers or, yeah, and trying to, f before, um, uh, as you see, in the number of times, they, the, the number of attempts they made, so the more, the more time they spend on correcting, so the more, more likely they are experience like negative, uh, have the negative emotion uh, feeling uh, experience. So actually for the last step, so we want to dig a little more deep uh, uh, further. So uh, based on the, uh, the preliminary results, so we, are, we, we actually we, we want to pay a little bit more focus on neutral state and confusion. Um, basically looking at from the uh, uh, EEGGS data to look at how they're like a cognitive engage, how they, how uh, to extent, uh, uh, to what extent they are, um, how you see, um, yeah, uh, and also how their uh, physical uh, physical arousal and relate to, for example, like confusion. And uh, we also want to look at the uh, they are writing piece to see uh, uh, if there are any uh, interesting uh, uh, relationship between uh, what we saw from the. Uh, 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 visual data and and actually the what how, how they receive from themselves about the experience um, yeah finally I would like to thank to my professors uh, one of the professors here <laughs> and I also like to thank for my uh, RAs so with the, without their help I don't think I can manage uh, manage to finish my uh, my study <laughs> on time. And I also like to thank a professor from the North Carolina State University for, for their support and give me the new, uh, this opportunity to use this platform to do this research. Yeah, thank you. We have 10 minutes for questions. Maybe I didn't get um, all the details of your results, but some points I got kind of were like that 
essential negative emotions, sadness, confusion, etc., seem to be uh, correlated, if not predictors, of well, learning gains, number of books completed, etc. How do you interpret that? So I'm in here in the second question, second research question. Well, I think my question was really, um, uh, what's your interpretation of the findings mm -hmm. that you have? It seems, at least to me, a bit counterintuitive that mm -hmm. if, a if a learner is more or less in negative emotions, that this seems to predict the number of books completed, like in your third point here. Yeah, yeah. Has that, does that have anything to do with your specific scenario or because that doesn't seem to be the intuitive way. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, actually, the, uh, for example, like EU2, right, the, there are some study already suggested is very much uh, uh, related to, like, uh, for example, like anxiety or uh, confusion, frustration. So I, I, you cannot isolate one AU just for, basically you can combine a bunch of views together in order to get a better sense of what is the emotion ex the, the person experiencing. So for this one, we just simply look at how simply regression to look at how the relationship be between the use and the, the, the learning outcomes. For example, like how many, yeah, how many questions they answered. Um, um, it's pretty straightforward, yeah. <laughs> From the results, from the numbers that you, you are showing, I think that the predictive power of, of some of your models are, mm -hmm. uh, is very low. So trying to, to, to compare anger with number of books read, that mm -hmm. you see an R of 0.13. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, at, that, at what point uh, is this a real effect that, that is very difficult mm -hmm. to go to, or, or to jump from very physiological responses mm -hmm. to, to things that are complex as motivation or, or, mm -hmm. or, the, or learning gains? So I think that there is a very big jump. Uh, how you evaluate it? This is a, well, they are statistically significant. It's, it's, yeah. it's there, but it's just coincidence. It's just a group, the group where you are measuring, or you think that this some discovery here. So actually, one of the biggest challenges we have is yes, to just to know, just find a way to analyze data and clean the data. So, for example, the students spent uh, 30 to 40 minutes to play the game, and uh, the the uh, iMotion uh, the software uh, generates uh, facial data it's like uh, 30 frames per second. So actually, it's very it's huge data. And also, uh, sometimes if the students move a little bit, move around from the screen, so it's hard to capture there. Uh, so we have some missing data as well, uh, yeah, missing data. And it's very hard to, we're trying to find different ways. We're thinking to use the uh, support of vector uh, machine approach to look at, uh, to clarify uh, the emotions based on, like it depends on the, the types of learner or the, the group, like a classification. So, but right now we haven't moved to, to that stage yet, so it's pretty soon we'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hi. Um, do you think that there needs to be some different kind of uh, facial action codes for learning compared to like other emotions? I mean, because, I mean, your results kind of point to the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, people aren't always looking particularly happy when they're learning something. Mm -hmm. And so it could mean that, you know, there's been some talk about other kind of facial action codes for learning that are different than the standard set for shopping or other types of uses. Actually, that's not only, like, problem we have actually actually in the, the affective of computing like a field. So uh, there are millions of ways to, because you have a lot of AUs, there are millions of ways to, uh, to combine them or to separate them. So it's very hard to like narrow down like, specific like, for example, like uh, neutral, like how many, uh, what are the uh, eight, like uh, action units combined equals 
uh, a neutral state. So that's why we're trying to use EEG data to look at their brain activities to see like how engaged, like, how mentally they are engaged. So yeah, there's something we're trying to validate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have some experience using EDA sensors for detecting emotions? I mean, besides detecting some kind of arousals, how useful are they to, <clears throat> to detect more differentiated, more precisely some emotions? Well, this is a very uh, like learning curve for me, basically. So uh, I'm so glad that one of my uh, colleague, uh, uh, she actually she's the uh, um, she has her own clinic. She does a lot of uh, uh, athletic, uh, prof like athlete pro uh, high performance uh, uh, study like uh, um, testing. So basically, I all the or some of the my equipments like I use her equipment to collect the data. Just want to get a better sense about how students' emotion related to their like, emotion, emotions or uh, related to the task they're doing. So right now, uh, I, sorry, I, can't, I cannot give a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, answers for that. But uh, yeah, I think pretty soon, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Questions? If not, uh, Jamie, thank you, our presenter. Thank you.